Hello and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Central Washington. Today we have a Tarnamp Smart 3 base on the bench. This is in for warranty repair, so I figured let's go over a Smart 3 base here. It's a half ohm to two ohm version. So a very versatile amplifier when it comes to connected loads. I don't know what the issue is on this. I have not opened this up yet. So we're going to figure it out together what the problem is. So hopefully everyone's having an excellent day as we cover the repair of amplifiers. Oh my. That's what we say, not a good outcome for an amplifier. These, uh, this particular failure becomes very challenging. This amplifier has been worked on before. Uh, all right, see, this is the kind of stuff that I really do kind of despise. So, again, this is a Smart 3 amplifier. Uh, data manufacturer 2212-2021. Obvious failure of the power supply. Very obvious. And whoever repaired this last... Uh, repair it from the top. Not my preferred method of repairing amplifiers. Uh, but that's how this one was repaired last, from the top. So I'm going to check and see if the transistors have any shorts in the output section. Gate source on the output transistors here. We have 10K, 10K, 10K. And what are we reading here, guys, when I'm reading gate source? I am reading the pull-down resistor. If you had shorted output transistors, you would not read the pull-down resistor. So that tells me the uh, gate source is okay. The pull down resistors are okay because I'm still reading 10K on those. I don't believe this to be an output failure. Obviously, I don't see any shorts, but I do believe this to be an obvious power supply failure. So there's a couple reasons why I think these smart amplifiers are going down on the power supply. One being that the IC that drives these transistors tend to run extremely warm. That's just an assumption that I have made from the numerous repairs I've done on the smart amplifiers. This particular type of short, I can almost say that it was a failure of the driver. Uh, do I know that for sure? No. But... There's just not many other real reasons why the power supplies fail like this. Uh, some people say, well, was it hooked up backwards? Mm, most times when they're when these get hooked up reverse polarity, 
it will it will damage the traces underneath especially the negative the ground trace and uh, reverse player is very obvious Ooh, it even got hot enough to melt the fan. Not the fan itself, not the blades, but the plastic housing is melted just slightly. So I'm just cleaning up all the soot from the burn-up transistors here. This just kind of gives me an idea of my tasks moving forward here. So, being the typical power supply failure, you can pretty much always bet that the 4.7 ohm resistor that feeds the driver IC is going to be open. Plus, the driver I see is going to be shorted. Which is no big deal. Easily replaced. Right? Right. We're just going to clean out this nasty, stinky garbage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the board from the heat sink. I'm gonna, I like to do my repairs the correct way and not from the top. I will remove the board from the heat sink and I will uh, inspect the bottom of the board, make sure that there's no reverse polarity damage, and we'll get right back with it. So just stay tuned. I'm just going to pull this out of the heat sink real quick, save you guys from the boring stuff. I'll be right back. While I'm doing this, while I'm taking these screws out, as you can see, I've started disassembling this. I would like to bring up a little bit um, about quality of repairs. So this amplifier, uh, as I was disassembling this, I noticed the sticker, the warranty sticker on it says 2 of 22. So this amplifier got repaired in... Uh, what is that? February of 2022. This person bought this amplifier off of Amazon April of 2022. Which, you know, I know time doesn't really mean anything, but there's some... There's a difference between good high-quality repairs and repairs that are thrown together. And what I'm seeing on this board, so sorry if if anyone has worked on this and you know that this is your board that you worked on. I'm not trying to dig on you or anyone else, but I would just like to point out that quality in a repair all kind of helps determine the longevity of the amplifier. So the repair was done on this did not fail at least that i'm aware of so far i don't show any shorts on the repaired section of this board but the quality of the repair in my opinion this is what sets me apart from a lot of other technicians i strive for the best quality in repairs the highest quality that i can give you Quality is customer satisfaction, and customer satisfaction is return business. No one would go back to the same company if they weren't satisfied with their service, right? I mean, sure, most people don't know, you know, the ins and outs of amplifiers, what it should or shouldn't look like, and a lot of people probably don't care. But I tell you what, a quality repair 
will highly reduce the chances of it coming back as a warranty repair. Okay, so I stand corrected. This uh, repair from last time was not done from the top. That's not possible. It had a, it looks like they had to have pulled the board because the bottom side is is relatively soldered. But there are some surface mount resistors that are lifted, uh, not sitting flush to the board. So I just wanted to really point out that quality of repair goes a long ways. Sorry for my arm in the middle of the camera here as I clean off some thermal paste off my tools here. Uh, so really what I need to do is just remove the power supply transistors. I don't see any indications of reverse polarity at all whatsoever. The gate vias are damaged. This really does look like just a driver failure. And I've noticed too on these boards, it's always the same side. Can I prove that it was under current? No. Can I prove anything that would deny the warranty? No. I don't see any external damage. I don't see any damages to the terminals. I don't see any signs of shorts. Reverse polarity. But we do know that these drive ICs that sit right here, right in between the transistors, they do run hot. So is it a driver failure? Most likely it's a driver failure. Driven hard, you know, everyone runs these amps pretty hard. A lot of current goes through these. So eventually, if something overheats, it's going to fail. And then once one transistor fails, they all kind of go off in a line because there's just a short. It just shorts. If it's drained to source, it's just a short across your batteries. So, yeah, that is the typical failure of a power supply. So I'm going to get these power supply transistors out, and I'm going to get this board cleaned up. I really can't do much with this board until I can get it all cleaned up and see what really uh, is going on here. And then we'll review the repair of this. So I will be right back with you guys again. I do thank you for sticking around, and uh, stay tuned. Be back for more. All right, the Hacko FR301 is up to temperature. Clean out and ready to roll. Let me grab some solder just in case I have a pesky via that won't like to heat up. Uh, lead free solder when it gets cooked is kind of a nightmare to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some fresh solder on the vias that have been damaged from heat. That way it clears out relatively quick. There we go. Just go right on down the line here. The trusty hacko. This transistor is falling apart in pieces here. Oh, yeah. Oh, it comes apart in pieces. We'll have to... But 
Never fear, we can get it out piece by piece if we have to. I like the boards for these tar amps, the PCB itself. They're relatively thick. They're, they uh, can withstand quite a bit of heat before things really start to get damaged. So it's not very often that the via itself or the PCB around the via gets so burnt that I have to replace the uh, PCB around it. So... I really enjoy repairing the uh, RM Sports. Here they are, all removed. We'll flip this back over. And then, of course, we have to get you guys down in I'll get you guys zoomed into this uh, board and Sorry for the dancing camera there. All right. Let's see what we got here. We have a mess is what we have. Let me get rid of my burnt pile of transistor guts. Yeah. And... There's the burnt area that we're working on. So now that the transistors are out, I can clean it up. So I can see what I'm working with here. Get rid of all the nasty thermal paste. Because you know me, I don't like to wear thermal paste. At all. Even though it's a, it's a grease that we all have to get used to working on amplifiers. Some isopropyl alcohol here to clean up the area. Hard to repair something when you can't see what you're repairing, so. Take the time to clean up the board. Which of course will uh, help aid in a successful repair. Q-tips, go through lots of Q-tips. Oh. 
There are some things here that are black that I'm not going to be able to fully clean, thoroughly 100%. So this amp will always kind of have that burnt smell to it. I do have plans in the makings to making a ozone box. To see if uh, I can kind of reduce the burnt smell of amplifiers without destroying the plastics and stuff. Uh, but that's something I will be pursuing as time pre uh, as time allows. And I'm just going to scrape away any of the black st stuff. It's almost like uh, PCB glue that comes up out of the board as this heats up. It's not carbonized board. It's just a thick black tar that comes up off of these boards when they burn up. So this actually doesn't look too bad. All right. So I'm going to point out that 4.7 ohm resistor for you guys. So let's get this into view. Looks like my focus might be off just a little bit. I'm not sure. But that 4.7 resistor is going to be right here. This 4.7 ohm resistor feeds power to this IC. which there is a hole right in the middle of it it's common it's really common so don't be surprised if you do all this work and this ic is not doing anything check your 4.7 ohm resistor here that feeds power to it sometimes you won't see any physical damage on this resistor but it'll be a really high value uh, which will not be supplying the voltage to the ic so that's something to look for if you can't get your IC to start up. If you have power here and ground, but you don't have any input signals, then you got to go back over here to the PIC and verify that the PIC survived the short. And the only way to really do that is to replace the IC, replace the 4.7 ohm resistor, or pull the IC, replace the 4.7 ohm resistor, and pulse the power supply to see if you get input signals to the IC. You can check the status of the IC just by checking, well, really gate to ground. So 1K, 1K, 1k 267 ohms of course it it does take out the one side of course five point one ohms so the output for this side here at the IC is bad but never fear you can always prove yourself on that by removing the IC. And then if you check your gate to ground again, you may find that it's no longer to ground. We're going to find out. There it is, 1K. So now the gate path to ground is now back to 1K. And what's that 1K again, guys? That 1K is your... Now, hold down those instruments. 
me, whoops, sorry about the dancing camera again there. So we'll get this board cleaned up uh, and uh, replace the resistor and see if we have pulses. I will be right back again. Stay tuned. All right, and welcome back. So I've got the gate drive IC pulled off. And as you can see here, I've got that 4.7 ohm resistor removed that drives power. Drives, doesn't drive it. That supplies power to the gate drive IC here. And as, as I stated, the gate drive IC did have a short in it. So it is going to get replaced. The gate drive IC on the Smart 3s. are the uh, UCC27324 gate drive ICs. I've got my resistors out, got my gate drive IC. I got my HACO fired up here to clean up these solder pads. The quick man solder braid. Nice and flat. We want all these pads to be nice and flat. It really does help when you go to put your new component on. So, nice and flat. Perfect. A little bit of flux, of course, the Amtex flux here. This stuff works great for leaded and lead-free solder. That's why I like to use it. It's a very versatile all around flux that does its job. Uh, IC pin one, make sure pin one on the IC is pin one, of course. Fire up the uh, Hacko, the FX888. Of course, all the links are down below, down below. For any materials, items, tool that I use, if you're interested in knowing about those items, uh, please. Feel free. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're just going to solder this IC back in place. And yes, I know you guys are probably saying, oh, are you assuming the PIC is still good? Yes, I am assuming the PIC is still good. It's not very often that I have a failed PIC. So... I will go ahead and do the work to get gate drive back to the gate pads of the power supply transistors. Let me get my soldering iron here away from the thermal paste. And let's solder this thing in place. Simple as they say, I think. When you do thousands of solder joints, you just you get better and better as time goes on. So if you're new to soldering, don't give up. Keep on going. Let me see if I can get the best view here for you guys. So there's a little bit more thermal mass on this side of the trace. So I'm just going to heat up the area here and then apply my solder and there it is the resistors back in place i do have my gate resistor so i'm going to go ahead and put some flux on the gate resistor pads here Get 
Yeah, my goal is just to make sure that I have a signal present at the gate pads of the transistors. You're going to hear, uh, oh no, you won't because my microphone's plugged in. Uh, fire up my scope here. Do, 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 as we say, piece of cake, piece of cake. And then I'm just going to solder the resistors right in place. straight of course it's got to be straight i'm always uh a big fan of things being straight and uniform and just makes for an excellent repair Maybe if I can get this to work with me here. There we go. Course straight. All right. So there's the gate drive 4.7 ohm resistors in place. We got the gate drive IC in place. And we've got the 4.7 ohm resistor in place that supplies power to the gate drive IC trying to make sure that the information here is as thorough as possible for you guys if you're working on one of these tar amps smart amplifiers i'm going to clean up the flux in the area here And the area around that 4.7 ohm resistor, clean up the flux there. All right, now I'm going to double check my resistance values. Of course, before applying any power. You just want to make sure that everything is the way it should be. 4.7, 4. 4.8 ohms looking good this is just going to verify that all the gate resistors all the solder joints are intact 4.9 4.9 4 looks good pull downs i do believe we're going to be fine on our pull downs yep 1k and over here on the other side 1k perfect i'm going to check the other side gate resistors to verify the value of those looks good looks good all right so looking fantastic i don't see any issues any issues so we're going to go ahead and apply some power to this i'm 
and see if I get any gate pulses. Let's see if I'm going to do this all left-handed here. All right, all right. Let's turn some power on. Put the probe in the scope here. All right, so I wasn't getting a very good ground. So you'll know if you don't have a good ground on your uh, on your power connections here if you're reading your voltage on your gate pads. All right, I do have pulses. Let me back up this view here for you guys. So this is how I have it set up. And what I've done is I have replaced the gate drive IC, the 4.7 ohm resistor that supplies power to the gate drive IC. And I have replaced the gate drive resistors. So there's the scope in the upper left-hand corner for you guys. And if I just... Get, uh, get my scope set up here so you guys can see what's going on. You can see just briefly on the scope there, you can see the pulses. So there's one side, gate drive. And there's the other side, gate drive. So both sides of the gate drive is functional. Like I said, it's rare for the PIC to go bad. It's, it's not often I have a bad board or a board with a bad PIC. They usually survive. Now, they don't survive 100%, but they usually do survive. If your guys' PIC did not survive, uh, please feel free to get a hold of me. I'm sure that I can uh, get your uh, PIC, failed PIC, taken care of. But otherwise, this amp is good to get power supply transistor put back in. And from that point there, I'd have no issue, no doubt in my mind, that this amplifier will fire right back up. So again, I'm going to save you guys from the boring stuff. This is just a quick video of the repair of the power supply section of a Smart 3 board. And the replacement of the gate drive IC and its associated resistor. Really straightforward repair on these guys. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, please feel free, leave them down below. I'll, I answer every question that comes through. Uh, and uh, any emails that come through, you can send me an email directly. You can go to ellensburgamplifier.com. You can Google me, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. I am more than willing, more than happy to help you get your amplifier repaired. Or if you want to send it in for repair, more, I'm more than happy to take care of that way also. 
I do thank you guys for all the channel support and just the amazement that I have the the channel membership that is going on. I I've never imagined again in a million years that I'd have over fifteen hundred subscribers watching me repair amplifier boards. I do this every day, but Sundays I try not to work on Sundays. So again, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Keep your fingers out of the rails. These voltages get quite high. Stay safe. We'll see you soon.